Is this better than a rooftop tent? I can tell you this much. It's at least a worthy competitor. Today, we will explore why it may or may not be right for your build as we dive into our Budget Overland series. In this series, we're not trying to say that the more expensive and heavier items are always bad. It definitely depends on your build and your configuration. We're just trying to showcase alternatives that might be the thing that you need to tie your whole build together on a budget. If you're new here, my name is Nathan Mueller, and this is Outdoor Auto, where we build and break, test and teach just about everything we can find related to outdoor automotive. One of the hardest things to navigate with off-roading and overlanding is budget. And there are actually two budgets you really need to worry about, money and weight. You only have so much money, of course, we kind of all know that constraint pretty well, and your vehicle is only programmed for a limited amount of weight. That's the one that most people forget. As we kick off a series to help people with budget builds, today's video will cover a rooftop tent alternative that saves you both money and weight. If you wanna know more about payload and weight constraints for vehicles, make sure to subscribe. We've got a deep dive video on that coming out soon. Okay, so why are we even looking at rooftop tent alternatives in the first place? The obvious reasons are budget and weight. Rooftop tents generally cost thousands of dollars and are very heavy. In fact, most tents are actually heavier than the manufacturers claim. I've kind of noticed this concerning trend where manufacturers are leaving out things like the mattress or the ladder or the mounting hardware, like things that you actually have to have to use the tent. They're not including them in the weight of the tent. So the tent many times is 20 to 30 pounds heavier than what they're actually listing it at. Many of these tents are pushing close to 200 pounds nowadays, which for many vehicles represents about 20% of their total payload. By the time you add passengers and a bed rack or a roof rack to carry your tent, you usually have half of your payload gone. The other issue is mobility. What if you wanna camp by the water, but you can only park like 200 feet away? What if you want to camp in the same spot for several days, but you wanna be able to run some trails? Packing up your tent every day is sometimes the thing that can actually convince you not to go out and explore. Your sense of adventure shouldn't get defeated by your adventure gear. If that's ever happening to you, might be time for a change. You could always go back to ground tents, but I would miss the benefits of being off the ground in bad weather. I especially hate trying to pitch a tent on the ground in mud. You know, that all weather, thicker material of a rooftop tent in storms and in snow is really hard to beat. And of course, I would miss the mattress. I don't know about you guys, but when you have 40 years old in the rear view mirror, mattress camping becomes pretty high on your priority list. Meet the swag bag, single-handedly responsible for crushing the popularity of rooftop tents in Australia. The swag, in its most modern form, is actually just an evolution of the bedrolls that miners used to use in the 1850s. Okay, so cool quick history note for you. It was actually cattle drivers that were using swags in the early 1900s on a route pioneered by a guy named Alfred Canning. It was a route that they had to use to get their cattle to be able to be sold. Um, and it was 1,150 miles long. So this became the canning stock route. Those cattle drivers, as far as everybody knows, are the first people to coin the term overlanding. So apparently Australia is the birthplace of overlanding, but it wasn't in cars, it was on horses. So swag bags have a storied history, but they've definitely evolved a lot. But I get it. A lot of people are like, hey, Nathan, it still looks like a ground tent. I know it looks like a ground tent, but bear with me for a minute. These things are actually packed full of surprises. First off, most are made of a four season worthy, thick waterproof canvas, yet they have plenty of built-in ventilation for those hot days. After all, Australians use these things. And do you know how hot it gets down there? It gets really hot. Second, they have built-in mattresses. Yes, comfortable mattresses. Not blow-up mattresses, but soft, cozy, and comfortable mattresses that roll up inside the swag bag. Third, they weigh an average of between 20 and 30 pounds. So that represents a significant savings on weight, obviously. But what about the mud? Well, many brands of swags have lightweight cots that you can buy that get them elevated off the ground just enough to be high and dry in the worst weather. 
Also, you can set it up in your truck bed if you want to, or even on your roof rack if you really wanted to. Obviously, you can pitch camp anywhere you want, so you aren't restricted to where you can park, and you can leave camp set up and take your vehicle out on the trails during the day if you want to. So they actually give you a decent amount of freedom. Just like the rooftop tent, though, not all swags are created equal. We've used a few different brands for the guide company in Baja, where all our gear tends to get pretty abused and used quite a bit. Probably the most important thing that we learned is you don't want to get the swag bags that only have the hoops that hold them up. You want one with proper poles and supports that go in between your vertical poles as well. Most of the hoop only models we tried had issues with broken poles pretty regularly. They also tend to sag in the middle and make it feel a little bit claustrophobic to camp inside of. Swags come in many different sizes from super light and compact one person to roomy two to three person tents. I have a two person that I can easily fit my wife, myself, and our two-year-old in when we go camping. And I'm six foot four and my wife is six foot one. So even though these things kind of look small on the outside, they are pretty large actually and pretty roomy. Now, they don't have as much headroom as most rooftop tents, but I haven't really found myself missing that when I've used them. It probably comes as no shock that the best brand we've tested so far is an Australian company. A quick point on objectivity here. I don't make a penny if you buy a Darcy tent. In fact, there's another company that I could get commission on if I recommended their swag. The problem is we experience consistent failures with their swags. I am recommending Darcy solely because it is a solid product that we have paid full price for. We beat it up in Baja and Idaho, and I've been really impressed with it. If you're interested in other unbiased reviews, we are going to be testing one of the Amazon clamshells in the coming weeks to see how it stacks up against name brands like Roofnest, CVT, and iCamper. We want to know if it's budget build worthy or if it's something that you should definitely pass on. Uh, so make sure to subscribe if you want to be notified when that comes out. Okay, so let's do some quick comparison stats between a swag bag and a typical setup with a rooftop tent. I'm going to try to compare major brands that you know. The Darchi seems to be pretty solid. They make a lot of different tents. The only type of tent that we've tested with them so far has been the Dirty D brand. The Dirty D swags come in three sizes, a 900, 1100, and 1400. The one I'm showing you in this video is the 1400. It's a little bit, honestly, too roomy for two people. Like I said, I could do two people and a baby very easily. If I was gonna get one myself, just for me and my wife, um, I'd actually probably get the 1100. It technically says it's a one person tent, but we've tried it out and it can fit two people. I guess you just have to be willing to have tight quarters. Uh, the 900 is definitely for one person only. As far as price goes, the 900 comes in at 499. Uh, the 1100 you can pick up for 579 and the 1400 rings in at $659. Now I told you that you can get a cot with it if you want to be elevated off the ground. To be honest, uh, a Macot costs 259. That's the 259 additional. I would never buy the cot myself. If I was camping and I had to camp in the mud, I would just pitch the tent in the back of my truck. Um, if it was raining or snowing or anything like that. And then the rest of the time, I'd be pitching it on the ground. Let's go and look at a tent. The iCamper Mini 3.0 is a $3,898 tent. So obviously a lot more expensive. That tent, we don't know how much tent that tent weighs because every site says a different weight. Uh, so I think it's one of those cases where sometimes they're including the ladder, sometimes they're not, I don't know. So it's reported to weigh anywhere from 125 pounds all the way to 165 pounds. So somebody needs to actually weigh that thing with all of its accessories and mounting gear and tell us how much it really weighs. That would be nice to know. You gotta remember, you gotta mount that tent on something. So you're either putting a roof rack on like your forerunner or you're putting a bed rack in your truck. If you think about that for a second, a bed rack, a, the cheaper bed racks nowadays, like that are steel, the heavy ones, cost about 950 bucks. So I priced out an RCI one. They are very common. I see them all the time. So our RCI steel bed rack costs $950 and weighs 92 pounds. 
So all of a sudden, even if that tent actually weighed 125 pounds, which I doubt is true, uh, now you're adding another almost 100 pounds for your rack to be able to mount it to. Uh, so now you're over 200 pounds and about a quarter of your payload. The payload on this Tundra is 1135, if I remember right. In the future video, I'll show you guys how to check that in your door and build a do a whole entire build plan around it. Aluminum rack is 1,298. That's This is me pricing out up top Overland. I've tested their rack. I paid full price for it. I've tested about six different racks. Their rack was the best rack I've ever used, bar none, like not even close. Um, it is aluminum. It's a lot lighter. It comes in only at 50 pounds, but obviously it's a lot more expensive. Because if you think about that, you get your aluminum rack. Now you've got $4,000 into your tent, another $1,300 into your rack, and you're comparing that to a, a swag bag that costs $579, right? Uh, so you can see how this quickly becomes a budget option and some of the finer things that you're leaving behind with a swag bag, you're like, well, can I do it and save $4,500? Starts to look kind of attractive, right? If you go the roof rack route instead of the bed rack, I mean, the, one of the most popular racks out there right now is of course the Prinsu rack. And that rack, depending on what vehicle you have, ranges from $830 to $1,180. And again, it's gonna be right in the middle between that up top overland weight and the, um, the steel rack. The swag bag literally weighs less than whatever rack you're gonna have to stick on your vehicle to put a tent on. I'm not trying to sell everybody that a swag bag is the best thing ever. It's just, depending on your build and how much money you have to work with, you lose a little bit. I'm not gonna say you don't lose some features, but it, it gets pretty compelling. Um, on the tent side, one other popular tent I would compare it to is the clamshells, you know, that open like this, they're super popular. I see them all over the place. I went ahead and grabbed CVT's tent as an example. So they have the CVT, it's the Mount Hood. The reason I grabbed their tent is they seem to be one of the only sites that seems to include the weight of everything. The ladder, the mounting hardware, everything. They, their, their weight on their site has been the most honest, consistent weight I've found of anybody so far, but that's where it gets kind of scary. So their clamshell tent, this that comes in a small, medium, or large, it comes in at a whopping 192 pounds. The medium size and the large size are both over 200 pounds. And that's about a $3,000 tent. So definitely cheaper, you know, you save a thousand bucks over the iCamper, but you're still talking $3,000 for a tent, you're talking at least 900 bucks for a wrap, and then you're talking almost 300 pounds of weight on your vehicle. So this is the comparison I think it's worth considering. When you're planning out your build ahead of time and you're trying to figure out where you're gonna spend your money and where you're going to spend your weight budget, Swag Bag has got a pretty compelling case. Look, I get it. A swag is not quite as cool as a pop-up apartment on top of your truck. But if you find yourself pressured on price or payload, a swag could be worthy of some consideration. I hope today's video was helpful. We have many more videos in the works covering budget build ideas, gear, and mods. Thank you for watching.